Patrick, you wrote a great article um, that I just uh, read a couple of days ago um, mm -hmm. uh, about Michael and your experiences with him. Wow, the, uh, amazing article. I, uh, it gave me chills, and I can't believe you're on the phone, so it's nice uh -huh. <laughs> to talk well, to you. I <laughs> Deborah has the credit for that. My yes, name. certainly, um, Deborah, yeah. you know, and thanks very much for the article. It certainly was a pleasure knowing Michael as a person um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, over, you know, sort of all that period because... Michael, as you said earlier, was, was very spiritual. He, he was also very gentle. And um, I suppose uh, during the time, we um, probably didn't uh, appreciate that he didn't have much longer uh, on the planet with us. And certainly if I had known that, my experience with him probably would have been um, even a deeper one. Yeah. Because Michael used to phone me a lot and ask my advice and different things. and. There'd be little silly things, like I was in Abu Dhabi, you know, and yeah. he, he was, oh, you have to go into, you know, sort of such and such a restaurant, I need the menu out of there or something. It'd be all, you know, sort of um, little things like that, or, you know, yeah. um, he was having some difficulties regarding certain things, he'd phone. He said, Tracy, I, I want your opinion on this. It wouldn't even be Patrick, you know? And um, he says, Tracy, I really value your opinion on this. And then, you know, another day he'd sort of say, oh, Patrick, look, you know, sort of chat over different things, but... Um, Yes, you know, there were certain things in life that troubled him that he wanted to get off his mind and certainly sure, sure. people in life that bothered him. And um, in that period, I suppose, post Santa Maria, hadn't he, uh, he felt that in many ways that America had let him down, honestly. And oh, um, sure. he felt also, you know, sort of that uh, probably he was not going to go back to Neverlands. And it's uh, interesting, initially, when they were considering burying him in Neverlands, I, I would have thought myself this is something that Michael wouldn't have wanted. You know, it's almost like yeah. this whole sanctuary there. You turned inside out. It was violated by, you know, sort of LAPD. He was right. as well. And his mentality, you know, sort of, he, he took an awful, awful battering mentally over the whole thing. I think in many ways he was, you know, afraid of um, and paranoid of everybody around him. You know, I don't mean fans. He loved the fans always. Um media particularly, you know, and um, in right, many ways right. he felt, you know, sort of very betrayed, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, I could imagine because the the de depths that they went to um, in regards to him and to try to make him look like someone he wasn't, and I, I would imagine that that would cause a lot of paranoia about, you know, having to watch everything you say or do or... And, and I can also see how he would be feel that America let him down because we did. <laughs> and, and, and the sad fact is this, that he was such a good and gentle person, mm -hmm. and because he did it in a totally Christian way, he never really got the credit for it that other people, you know, I mean, certainly a lot of um, film stars and, and, and musicians have went down to Haiti, for instance, and got associated right. with it. And it's often, you know, sort of a self-promotion thing. And Michael was never like that. Michael always, you know, would would certainly, you know, sort of do all his charitable works and humanitarian works behind the scenes, you know. Right, right. Which, you know, sort of was one of the reasons in many ways that people were even, you know, sort of unaware of his humanitarian work or, or right. the depth of it, you know. But, I mean, at times Michael lived penniless, you know, and I know this, you know. And, um, and he still would be giving away... Um, yeah, and had give away, you know, many, many millions to, to, to people that he would see as less fortunate. And certainly, you know, his image, because of that, will go on for years to come. You know, as people, you know, find out about Michael, find the truth about him, and um, realize that so much injustice was done to him, you know, it was almost like, you know, um, analogous to, you know, sort of some other people we sort of mentioned that... Um, during the period on Earth, you know, sort of weren't appreciated, and then sort of in later sort of times, people realized what a, a real treasure they had, you know? Right, right, yeah. And it's a shame that, that it wasn't realized as much while he was alive. You know, you just always hope that, that he had some sense of, of how much people valued him, but I, I'm sometimes unsure, you know, about yeah. that because of all he went through. My great concern now is the trial that's coming up mm -hmm. because I get a feeling that we will be all sort of um, subjected to a media barrage of um, corporate America trying to further sort of um, destroy his name 
And in right. some ways, he'd be made out to be some sort of drug freak that sort of self-injected himself, was responsible or culpably right. in some way involved with his own death. And, you know, I really believe that this will be put across probably on the basis of an insurance payout, you know. And, I mean, I know a lot of people are saying that in the background, but I think, you know, there is a time and a place and that we will have to, and I probably will step forward as well, to defend his name because, um, you know, it was bad enough, the case being brought against him in Santa, you know, sort of Monica, and on 14 charges, everyone thrown out, and there wasn't even a word almost about it in the media the next day because they just wanted right. to hand poor Michael to death. And I think this time around, you're going to see something similar happening the period after Christmas, you know. And Hello? When, the, when the trial starts, it's going I agree, though, that I, I worry about this trial because I think that I agree with you. I think that it's going to it's going to dredge up uh, an attempt to dredge up all this um, negative about him again, which oh, never was true the first time. You know. Yes, and, and and the thing is because there is a sort of public out there that has been uh, to an extent um, conditioned to some level of brainwashing you know, they'll have an appetite for listening to, 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 to falseness also. I mean, I've already been offered, you know, sort of um, close to five to six figure numbers, you know, sort of to, to try and sort of, um, <clears throat> you know, say bad things about him. You know, number one, they don't exist, that's fair right. enough, but to think that anybody could in some way, you know, want to print or make up something just for the sake of selling a paper on the right. basis of somebody else's name or his dignity or his respect, particularly somebody who was so good to other people, it, you know, it, it really astounds me and in, in, in many yeah. ways horrifies me. And that wasn't yeah. even from um, your side of the Atlantic. That was on ours, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah see, and, it, and that's, that's a perfect example of how the media works for people who aren't as aware that, you know, that... They'll go out and try to pay, you know, offer, you know, big money to to try to get dirt on somebody, um, and it's it's sad to see that, especially for him. As you said, he was he was such a kind-hearted person and always giving, and and it it just it's a shame people couldn't see that side of him more and appreciate it because there was so much false information um, that was out there. I agree, and the sad fact is, you know, sort of, you only had to be in his company five minutes, and he admitted this total radiance of goodness, you know. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and you never really heard him give out about anybody else, and even though, you know, sort of, he was bothered by a lot of people that were probably even... I would say stealing from him, money-wise, you know. Yeah. He never really cast against him. You know, he, he, he would always, to an extent, reach the point without, you know, sort of naming names or anything, but he'd, be, he'd be make you more aware just of, of what was bothering him that way, you know. But there's no yeah. doubt about it. He often spoke in generalities in a way that, you know, there was just no badness in him, you know. Right. And, he, yeah. he, you know, he, and continually all the time, you know, sort of, he seemed to, you know, to think about other people. The, the, that thing we mentioned about the kids in the hospital that were burnt, and uh, certainly I think there's a book coming out on them very soon as well. Um, <clears throat> he, from time to time, you, you'd be chatting about something else, and he just, you know, sort of a few days later would turn around and say something like, Patrick, tell me, are those children in pain now, you know? Um, oh, yeah. Will they be getting morphine for their pain? You know, and... I would say, yeah, well, the, you know, the, the hospital wouldn't allow them to be in pain, you know, but, you know, three or four days later, it'll be back to the same thing, you know, I mean, those particular children, and you could see that, you know, things like that bothered him continually, uh, and it was just genuine affection, you know, sort of for um, other people, and, and particularly children, you know. Right, and, and it seems like people, so many people can't seem to understand that, you know, I think because it was turned into something evil and it wasn't, it was, you know, but it was twisted into looking like it was something evil. And, and people can't seem to understand, like, inherent goodness in people. And I think, you know, I've heard other people describe, people who have met, who had met Michael, they described the same thing where there was, like, there's just this love just pouring out of him. And some people described it as almost like they could feel like, um, God's love in his heart just, you know, emanating from him. I think that's a very, very fair comment, and I certainly experienced that on almost every occasion I met him. Okay. You know, yeah. because he almost worked on two different levels. There was interaction on what you're doing with him, but there was a continual thought process of, you know, sort of um, wanting to sort of help other people as well. It's almost like that 
you know, sort of state that I had mentioned in Buddhism, that just people who reach that level of, you know, spiritual sort of um, enlightenment mm -hmm. almost within themselves have this continual, you know, wanting to sort of, you know, help other people. It's, it, and it was fascinating, you know, to see yeah. that in Michael. And I was so humbled to, you know, have shared many experiences like that with him, you know, because oh, when yeah. you're in the presence of somebody, you know, sort of... Um, good. You know, I've met many celebrities in my time and mm -hmm. even, you know, sort of this week alone I did, but there was none like Michael really, you know. Um, yeah. It's almost they all had an angle, but he didn't. You know, and it's almost like a lot of them got involved in certain charities or functions, almost to promote their own name and things like that, but everything he did was, you know, sort of be behind the scenes. Right, right. Right, you I know. agree in that, yeah. In, in that made him so special, and but, but people didn't realize, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, um, I wanted to piggyback on something you said earlier. You mentioned how you were offered money to, to lie. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but in 1993, after the allegations broke, there was a family. They stayed with Michael uh, at Havenhurst in the 80s. And that's when Quiver offered them, offered the father $200,000 to lie and say Michael molested his kids while they were at Aiden Harrison. He, he turned it down completely. Wow. You know, the article is available on Fox News on the, um, Roger Friedman's column from 2005. But when I read that, it just blew me away that the tabloids were stupid that low to offer 200000 to make up a, a lie about something so serious. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, it's incredible the sort of depths that they will go to. It's, yeah. you know, just to sell papers. Um, and, uh, you know, the, 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 the sad fact is they also have absolutely no sort of um, feeling of any sort of wrong in this, you know. Right. Because, uh, right. you know, I know because I've been sort of in some of these people's presence, you know, that they uh, they just see it as another business deal. There's no right, wrong, anything like that there. Right, you know, right. You know, so, you know, yeah, it stuns me at times, and certainly um, it's going to be certainly an interesting um January. So well, Michael really was crucified. Oh, yeah. of course he was. Yeah. You know, yeah. and there's no doubt about it. I would think, you know, if there was the tabloid media present on Earth during the period that sort of Jesus Christ was here 2,000 years ago, you know, they'd probably be branding him as a paedophilia as well. You know, from the point of view right. that Jesus loved right. children, Jesus did everything and explained his parables through children, and Michael was very much almost the same way. Not to bring too close of an analogy, but it's almost like that whole love that sort of, you know, because we're all now in Western society almost afraid to look or smile at children in cases people would, you know, sort of get the wrong impression. And it's amazing. I mean, I was at a football match recently, and, you know, sort of, um, some of my um, friends that I grew up at school with, the kids were playing by a puddle, and I had a camera with me, and I just went over, because I, knew, I didn't really know the kids, but I knew him well, and knew they were, they were his kids, and I was at the puddle match with him, you know, and um, I just took a photograph of the kids, and these one one person came up and said, do you have permission to take a photograph of this children? And, like, the father came over, and, you know, put his arm around me, and says, you know, man, but he said, you know, Patrick, that's the way people are now, you know. And it's just incredible yeah. how, yeah. you know, it was almost in one generation, that, you know, the whole, um, I suppose, relationship between children and adults has changed as well. Because mm -hmm. kids don't walk to school anymore, even in Ireland. And, you know, sort of um, that sort of normal, I suppose, bonding relationship they got from strangers is almost gone now. You know, it's... Right. Oh, yeah. It does concern me, you know, sort of, because even I see in my brother's children, they really pampered them and they're brought to school everywhere in SUVs and you know they're never allowed to walk out the dark or out on the road and when we were kids growing up I mean we walked two or three miles to school and we came home together and there wasn't you know okay. no fear you know it's sure, just a different sure, world yeah. you know yeah I agree and I don't mean to cut to cut into this but I'm getting messages saying that Patrick was saying some some really important things so yeah you're still we're, we're going to hear you okay <laughs> Yeah, um, so so it's unfortunate that that whole, you know, sort of um, period, and particularly in a country like Ireland, where, you know, sort of paedophilia got associated with clerical abuse, and there was mm -hmm. almost like a wall went up that it brought down governments, it brought down institutions, it brought down, you know, sort of people of respect. And that was the period also, you know, sort of the Catholic priests in the United States, uh, Michael got caught up in all that as well. So it was very easy to to turn the minds of a hostile nation because they're being primed with other problems, you know.